Hi everyone, Matt here, and today we are continuing on with Hive Swamp Prenson. Um, when we last left off, we finished Volume 12, and now we are starting Volume 13 of Fate, Fortune, and Faction. Blah blah blah, friendship blah. <laughs> Boulder, Lamity, Restelza, Sezzy, at. Let's go, Bur Boulder. You just aren't feeling it today. You're getting more and more of these gray nights recently. Nights where the call of the streets, that infinite ramble for companionship, just sounds exhausting and meaningless. You had days like this back on Earth, too, when getting out of bed just didn't seem worth it. The sun is beginning to slip under the horizon. Usually this would be the sign to rise and shine, or rise and dark. But all you've managed to do so far this evening is make yourself some coffee. You recently mentioned to Tagora that you drink in that you drink instant, and he was so disgusted that he gave you a coffee machine. Claimed it was an old one he didn't use anymore, but it still had the price tag on it. <sighs> on the table sits a palm husk, Connell had taken off a dead kid especially for you. You cradled it in your hand, in a mug sky moment. It looks like she painted it herself. There's a white blob on one side that you think it's supposed to be the lady. You're even wearing the hoodie Malik gave you to uh, cut the evening chill. Here you are, all wrapped up in, in the warm embraces of your friend's, friend's goodwill, safe and sound. But deep inside you festers something, gnawing existential dissatisfaction, that classic angst that philosophers wrote about. Your palm must chimes and you pick it up lazily. What, another rando trying to slide into your DMs? Sorry folks, you just don't have a time have the have time for that anymore. You are a friendship connoisseur, and some leer of the rarest of amicable vintages. Vintages Vintages Vintages. You unlock the screen to find a message. Psst. I'm not certain that this line is secure. Actually, I'm positive that it isn't. But I'm risking contact because it is imperative that we speak. I'm sending you a rendezvous. I'm sending you a rendezvous coordinates. If you wouldn't mind coming any time after the sun is set. Psst. I realize that this is unorthodox, but please believe me when I tell you that this is not a trick or a trap. I have important information regarding your place on Alternia. You tend to re reply to the message, but there isn't a cursor anywhere to input text. In fact, there doesn't even appear to be a messenger app open on your phone. It's just a random text box exploding in the void. Barely have a chance to read it all the way before it vanishes and Goro Maps opens with an address already programmed in it. It's close enough to walk to, which is great because using your stolen skull buggy still makes you a little nervous. Swallow the rest of your coffee and grab your shoes. GPS leads you to a shop you recognize. It's the cafe from your weird sort of date with Linera. It's not too crowded at this time of day. The usual stunning crowd doesn't appear to be here. A couple of trolls are sitting around sharing pots of tea. Fool! Fucking idiot! I explicitly stated that I wanted Essence of Dayglo, not whatever this garbage is. Oh, you know this person. It has, really has been a minute, hasn't it? Our data stands in front of the counter. Shouts at the at the cash register. Whatever, whatever automated system runs this shop has apparently gotten her order wrong. What are you looking at? Hmm? This is absolutely none of your. Oh, it's you. Our data, our data swiftly covered up her surprise, examining a sharp, perfectly shaped nail. You look different. Better? That's not an exaggerate. I simply meant you look less like toxic waste and more like run of the grain grinder garbage. Tell Ordana that it's good to see her too. Man, this really takes you back. You'd been so simple back then, so unevolved. You were laser focused on a single desire friendship. On a single desire, friendship. Now, well, 
You still like friends. You really do. And you also have, like, a car and a sweatshirt with somebody's sign on it. You've moved up. You've moved up in the world. Fascinating. By the way, is she the one who summoned you here? Summoned? You? You must be joking. I haven't spared a single solitary thought of you for you since you dragged your wrenching wretched carcass out of my hive. Absently, you push your hand into the pockets of your hoodie. Something crinkles between your fingers, and you pull out a folded piece of paper, a folded piece of notebook paper. Because this definitely hadn't been in there when you'd left your hive. Pass a couple people on the street, but you definitely don't remember any of them getting close enough to slip something in your pocket. Huh. It only says two words. Out back. Oh man, should you go? Go, go, go. Let's be real here. If you were ever go going to refuse a suspicious invitation, you would have done it by now. You would have drawn the line at vehicle theft or murder church or anime club. You can't resist a social engagement. Your tragic, your tragic flaw. Okay, I guess. Enjoy yourself. Head you head back through a beaded curtain. Half expecting an alarm to ring. How do they keep people from just robbing stores here? Are there, like, lasers and shit? You emerge into a tiny little back garden. None of the plants here are ones you recognize from it. That's still nice. You cross a bridge over a slow flowing stream and find yourself looking down at a path that blooms into a tight, dizzying uh, spiral. Maybe you're supposed to walk across and ponder your place in the universe? Contemplation would be inevitably cut off before it hits its climax because someone is sitting at the center of the spiral. She is a small, compact shape with her hair cut short and choppy around her chin, wearing a shapeless white dress. Really more of a robe. Oops. I've been waiting for you. Thanks for coming. She speaks in a stage whisper. Low and full of air, still loud enough to hear across the path. You pick your way carefully across the spiral, making sure not to mess any of it up, trending only inside the lines. The girl gives you a small, secretive smile. Her name's Boulder. I ask her if this is her garden. Does she live here? It's nice, but it's not exactly out of the elements, actually. It looks like there's some sort of clowns rolling in. You're probably going to get rain soon. Oh yeah, my Ruby, my Reed Capricorn is over there under that tree. She smiles again, and you can't tell if she's messing around. In fact, she is entirely unreadable. While your face is, is a totally reflective, unreadable surface, is a totally reflective surface, and all you're seeing is the cloudy, is the cloudy sky and the garden. You can't tell how she feels about you at all. Would you like to sit down? Inside the circle, or... She looks around like she is the only one. Like she is only just realizing she is at the center of a complicated geometric pattern. It doesn't matter. I only wanted to see if you would follow the path or tramble through it. But you didn't either. You forged your own way while taking care to preserve that which has come before. Ask her what that means. Hmm. Maybe nothing. I'm not sure. The wind tosses her hair and the clouds chase each 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 other across the sky. If the rain comes it will come soon. Boulder continues to look at you as you shift awkwardly and shiver, pushing your hands into your hoodie. This is different than any other friend meetup you've had, even with the ones who, or the others who purposely sought you out. There is a and Sir Entity? Sir, Sir Entity. To Boulder, that all the rest lack. Or maybe that's just this Zen as fuck garden getting to you. Try to remember what Boulder said to you in the message that she somehow managed to make appear on your phone that immediately self immolate. That she has some information for you about your place on Alternia or some shit like that. Did I say that? I guess I did. I guess I just. I suppose I wanted a chance to talk to you a bit before the end. I was starting to feel a little. 
jealous, maybe? Right. I guess everyone, or everybody, has been going on the, about the funny dumb alien robot who's been prowling in the countryside. No, that's not it. Though I'm sure you're very funny. I just wanted a chance to talk to you. Someone who is so adrift in the swell fate of the... Who is so adrift in the swell of fate and the whims of the paradox. Paradox? You don't know anything about paradoxes. Well, you know what they are. You just don't see why they're relevant. They aren't. Paradoxes aren't relevant, but, they, but their very nature. It's the essence of that nature that makes them so integral to this story. Shake your head. You're not built for this cosmic stuff. You're just an orphan from Earth with quick fingers. Fingers for spaceships and apparently vehicles. Boulder gives you another sliced file. Oh, quick fingers? You blush. You hadn't meant that as a dirty joke or anything. Also, your fingers are no were near as quick as hers. She somehow got a piece of paper in your pocket while you were standing in a cafe. She was back here. That's like reverse pickpocketing through astral projection. Boulder laughs. She stands up and moves across the garden path, following the spiral so squ so swiftly and efficiently that she might as well be floating. She drifts over to one of the trees, pulling a coat down from where it's, it's slung over a branch. It covers her from chin to ankles, coming together to form an olive green symbol over on her chest. That looks like a question mark without the dot. A broad-brimmed hat finishes out the, ens the ensemble. Well, I can't teach you astral prote protection, but pickpocketing is actually quite simple. Would you care to learn? Ideally, we'd need a third person to act at the mark, but I think we can make it work. Or crime, huh? Sure, let's do crime. This whole mess started with the theft of a spaceship. If Boulder is right about all the fate or shit that was supposed to happen, so maybe you'll lean into it. Perfect. The first and most important aspect of the art is pickpock of pickpocketing, staying unobtrusive. Think about mentioning that walking around in a great big coat and floppy hat is not the most unobtrusive thing you've ever seen. Why you aren't the expert here. Also, you're an alien, so you don't really have room to talk. Maybe you should just get a big coat like that yourself. You just love ripping looks off of... You just love ripping looks off all of your friends. Boulder takes you through the basics of criminal sleight of hand. And on the whole, you aren't too bad. In fact, you might... You think you might have a future in it if you weren't already on the career path of professional friendshipper. You don't know what this has to do with her leaning that uh, with her learning about you or teaching you your place on Alternia. What's fun in Boulder is a good teacher. If there's one thing this journey has taught you, it's that when something is inactively painful or destructive, just write it out. You don't think you'll be going around pickpocketing many trolls. Enough of them already want to kill you. But it's good to have this skill on reserve in case if you ever need cash fast and don't like don't feel like hanging up any of your rich friends. I wonder if Boulder uses it for anything else besides passing notes. Psst. My sources tell me you've been on for almost three paragraphs now. You have no idea how long a paragraph is, but what the hell? Sure. Impressive. No wonder. She trails off thoughtfully and shakes her head. You wish she would say something with some sub oh, with some substance to it instead of just big nonsense. At least she isn't threatening you with violence or trying to stick wires into you, so you're counting this interaction successful so far. Also, you fear you feel weirdly chilled out with Boulder. Sure, you want to be friends, but there is none of that stomach-churning, spine-bending desperation. So make sure she likes you, at whatever the cost. You feel more awake when you have... You feel more awake than you have in weeks. Man. You've got to learn to pickpocket in a garden behind a cafe more often, if this is what it does to your stress levels. Want to get something to eat? Or maybe just coffee, because that's what they serve you. Sure, you could use another caffeinated beverage on top of another cap on top of the other caffeinated beverage you've ha you had earlier. Why not? You'll sleep when you're dead. 
If only. He followed her out of the garden and back into the cafe. <laughs> Who is this now? Yet another friend? Oh, our data, you're still here. Of course I am, fool. You were back there for about ten minutes. Ten minutes? Well, it felt like way longer than that. Guess you underestimated the power of a good training montage. You introduce our data to Boulder with with the cheery with the cheerful earnestness of someone who has forgotten the systemic classism of the planet of which they currently reside. Our data stops you with an aristocratic sneer. Stop, stop, before I have to stop you myself. I have absolutely no desire to mix with those so low on the social ladder. What in the world could she have to offer me? You shrug. You're not sure. Maybe friendship? You know friendships between people of different castes are possible. You've seen them happen. Regardless, you feel bad for exposing your newest friend to the vaguely not nonsensical abuses of your oldest. She turned back to Boulder to apologize and find her gazing coolly at Ardana like she could do it all night. That's none of the fear or reverence oh, or the falsely obedience you've seen the other low bloods display to the blues. Said Boulder looks at Ardana like she's a bug. Whereas Pebble that she would just love to kick out of the way. Psst, nice to meet you in person, Miss Carmia. Hey, your GrubTube channel has been losing subscribers recently. I wonder why that is. Blue hits our dad's cheeks in an angry flush. I... I'm currently on hiatus. The old garbage was getting tired. The old garbage was getting tired. I have so many imitators that my own content is starting to seem derivative. She gives one of her manacle laughs. But it's a little less robust than usual. Man, the wild tundra of the of internet fame really is a stark and arid battlefield. In fact, I have a new feature in the works as we speak. She opens up a little file she'd been hacked, killing with the cash register over earlier. Poison. I think the best and most expedient, expedient process would just be to dose my featured guest's food and then hide the antidote somewhere in my hive. Unless you have another idea? She smiles, sly and mean. Boulder smiles back, just as vicious. Great. Have fun with that. While Boulder talks, her eyes start fli flicking from you to our data and then down. Again and again. You, our data, and down. Takes a couple of go-rounds before you realize what she's telling you. She keeps looking down to your hands, which are stuck in your hoodie pocket, exactly where you found the note Boulder slipped to you. Our data is carrying a bag that looks expensive and extremely goth. You can see where the file of poison is sticking out. Oh man, you know what you have to do. The group comes into the shop and pushes past the three of you. You move in on our data and slip a hand into her bag, palming the smooth, cold vial. Gives you a weird look. Like, why are you suddenly all up on me, peon? But she doesn't notice the theft. I suppose I'll be going now. And if I were you, I'd be more mindful who I choose to associate myself with in the future. Say bye to her, feeling the tiniest bit guilty. But she's planning to use this poison poison to murder theater to do murder theater in her prison basement. So you don't feel that bad. Take care now. Hardai leaves bolt leaves and Boulder takes an inquisitive step closer. Psst, show me. You open your hand to display the foils, flushed with criminal euphoria. Oh. Oh hell no. You got the wrong fucking vial. This one's blue, not red. You got the antidote, not the poison. God, you honestly thought you were moving past these kind of cock-ups. Oh, damn. Well, at least you have the antidote now. Never know when one of those might come in handy. She sways forward and clutches her neck. For one confused second, she... You think she's doing an impression of someone who might need an antidote. Then she falls to her knees. Dart forward to catch her before she can totally eat it. 
She's heavier than she looks. A backed muscle and a coat full of, un of an ungodly number of weapons. She has like four guns in there. What the hell? Her arms are full, so you can only watch helpless. Helpless as a troll in, in a hood that covers their face and their horns books it out the door. You shout that some fucker just stabbed your friend, but nobody here is looking at you. The same way at late people on Earth might ignore a mother trying to calm a toddler throwing a tantrum, just turning their eyes away from a d distasteful public scene. Ow. Damn it. But he put a hand up to Boulder's neck and tried to sunch the bleeding. But there isn't any bleeding. Bewildered, you pull apart the lapels of her coat to see a single drop of olive blood trembling above her collarbone. Above her collarbone. Discoloration spreads in a dark spill over her neck and radiating down her chest. You both say it at the same time. Poison. You open your hand to look at the tiny blue vial, then back up to Folder. Folder. Her eyes are glassy, her skin going blotchy and ashen. There's, there's no reason to believe that our data is poison and the poison the assassin used are the same, with the same antidote. Sorry. It already strains the power of coincidence when you grab the antidote at all. That you, uh, you're probably right. So maybe you should try it anyway? I can't feel my legs. Right, right. Maybe the mere fact that this is such an unlikely ha happenstance means it will be the right antidote. Everything you've done so far has, has had the pull of inevitability to it, especially all of your interactions with Boulder. Great. Awesome. Glad you're realizing your inherent significance to this particular microcosm of causation. Now, can you please pour that stuff in my mouth so I can swallow it and possibly not die? You help Boulder tip her head back and put the vial to her lips. At the last minute, you wonder if it's not, if it's supposed to be diluted, but Boulder gulps the whole thing down and immediately begins to shake. Smoke billows out of her nostrils and open an open mouth and holy shit what is going on this does seem to this doesn't seem like any type of antidote to you then the smoke clears and Boulder opens up her big yellow eyes how does she feel alive marginally she lets you help her to her feet you immediately pull her into a fierce yet gentle hug it's wild to undergo someone else's near-death experience you feel like you know her way better than one my one mon you feel like you know her better than one montage scene's worth. Another new friend. Oof, not so tight. Ease up a little. All the T-Sippers are staring at you now. Death apparently isn't interesting, but the possibility of some quadrant adjacent stuff, they are suddenly all about. Sorry, assholes. You ju just you and your new friend sharing a touching, s sharing a touching post near fatal encounter. Nothing to see here. Didn't die. Uh, backyards are as bad as basements. No way. Okay, listen. You've done some pretty dumb stuff since you, since you crash landed here. For instance, following the woman standing in front of you to into her basement, but not this time. Nice try, Catfisher. Important correspondence. Now you crumble up the page in your hand. Nothing that can wait. Can't wait. <laughs> Good. Impeccable timing. Just what I was hoping you would say. Friend blocked. No more crime, please. You've already got a hell of a rap sheet. Maybe it would be best to not add any new skills that would lead you into temptation. Fair enough. Would you care to go for a stroll? It's a nice night. It's a windy, unsettling night, and it looks like rain. I suppose that's nice, depending on your definition. You'd absolutely love to take a stroll. That, that's your whole vibe recently, strolling. You follow her out through a little back gate and into the street. You leave the cafe behind and are quickly consumed by the drift of the midnight crowd. You brace for the inevitable pitying, hostile looks you get huh, whenever you go out in public. You should have mentioned that you try to avoid large groups, but strangely, no one even glances at you. It's like Boulder exudes a sneaky aura that encompasses you, encompasses the both of you. As you walk, you ask her if she really believes in fate. Like, the two of you were always going to meet 
and nothing could have happened any differently no matter what you did. Boulder gives you a thoughtful sidelong glance. Hmm. Well, that would imply that none of our choices matter. That causality is inevitable. That randomness is irrelevant. Right? Uh, sure. Scamper to keep up with her, both physically and mentally. For someone who asks you to take a stroll, she she sure is booking it down the street. But that disregards our choices. Fate di dictates that all possibilities are, by their very nature, necessities. Or rather, the choice you made was the only one you ever could make. I doubt the universe is that simple. Doesn't sound simple to you, but you hum and nod and sagely and nod sagely because you want Boulder to think you're deep instead of asking yourself whether you were meant to be to meet me here to meet me and meant to be here it makes more sense to wonder what the forces are that have conspired to bring it into being well that would be exhaustion and ineptitude what well, you don't exactly remember what happened but you're sure involve something stupid like falling asleep at the wheel and drifting off into another solar system. It had been a rough 48 hours, you know? A lot of escaping and running and punching and stealing of high-powered vehicles. Yes, of course. I understand. All a day's work. She stops you at most intersections so she can take Sir Hen just glances around every corner before gesturing you forward. Every so often, she will turn the two of you around to double back. You aren't exactly sure why. Maybe she thinks you were being followed, but who would follow you from a cafe? All sorts, but don't worry. I know how to shake off a tail. You cross one of the main thor thoroughfares, and a big black bird swoops at your heads. You yelp and duck but you look around to see that the bird has landed on Boulder's arm and she's stroking its back. You brace yourself for her to start talking or some shit like that because that's what your life is like now, but it just sticks its leg out for Boulder to remove a scrap of paper. It waits patiently for her to read the message and then scribble something on the back, before attaching it to the crow and throwing it back into the air. Man, that's some Harry Potter-ass shit. My mind formants wants to run a oo in the meat space. Unusual. It has been an unusual day. Unusual couple of months, honestly. Yes, of course. You've had it much harder than I have. What was I thinking? Well, you weren't trying to get into a contest of whose life sucks more, but yeah, it's been rough. You appreciate that you can see that. Of all the plans to be forced to, Alternia is, well, not ideal. Not the worst, but still have my sympathies. Is there anything at all you like about it? What, about Alternia? Well, you're kind of digging this whole night as a di as day thing. You're from a diurnal species, but you've always been a bit of a night owl. Also, not to brag, but you've made some seriously cool friends. Yes, I've been following your exploits. Your friendship ac acquisition proceeds at Procedures are really quite impressive. Ah, now you're brought. Now you're blushing. Ask Boulder how she knows that much about your exploits, because it's only pretty recently that you've had any sort of recent social media presence. You suppose she could have, she could have a goal alert like Malik did, but quick, around here. Boulder leads you to a deserted lot between two buildings. There's nothing here except some broken bottles and a pile of old rubber tire, uh, tires. Well, she leaves you behind the tire pile to keep watch. Although she is probably just doing it to get you out of the way. Which, fair. Then she heads out into the center of the lot, presumably to wait for her contact. You sit there, you sit here twiddling your thumbs trying to suppress and the desire to pull out your phone. That doesn't seem very covert ops. You're just starting to get really antsy, jittering your leg and cracking your knuckles and digging a little hole, a little hole in the dirt with a stick when you hear something strange beneath the wind, a swish followed by thunk. Boulder jerks and clutches her neck. You run, 
you rise up from your rubber, rubber pile, saying tire is flying. You widely look up at the surrounding buildings, trying to find out where the projectile came from. You don't see anyone, not even a lone gunman. Run for your new friend, not spending a thought for your own safety. Clouds move overhead like some one has put them on fast forward, the wind rattling the trash on the pavement. By the time you reach Boulder, she has begun to twitch in hard spasms. One look at the blotchy stain spreading across her neck, and there is no doubt. You both see it at the same time. Poison. Fall to your knees beside her. Oh god, what are you supposed to do? You don't know anything about, anything about poison or first aid or anything else useful. God, why are you such a fucking waste of space? You could have been gaining some life skills instead of you just lo instead of just loafing around like a complete idiot. You stop, don't. There isn't time. This stuff acts fast. Holder takes hard, gasping breaths between each word. Her eyes are going cloudy. She makes a desperate grab for your hands. Listen. For the first time, her voice rises above a whisper. Her grip is surprisingly strong. You tell her to save her strength, but she shakes her head so hard her hat falls off. I'm not important. You tell her to stop being dramatic. Of course she's important. I'm not being dramatic. Well, maybe a little because I'm dying. But still, remember what I said about fate. Luck fate. You don't want anything to do with it. If this kind of shit... If, if this is the kind of shit it's going to pull on you. So many of your friends have died because of you. Because you're incredibly... Because of your incredible inability to... To... The world twists and stutters. Your guts are a record, and that record is skipping. For a moment, you're not sure that whoever that poison chain bastard is has shot you too. But then your vision clears, and you feel the rain on the back of your neck. The, ro the world is rolling back to you in waves of color and sound. The dark sky splits open on a fault line of lightning. Boulder's hand goes limp in your own. With shaking fingers, you reach out to touch her motionless cheek. Fuck. Fuck! Not again. Why? An uncontrollable wave of despair washes over you as you look down at the corpse of this girl you barely know. You... Where are all these feelings coming from? There's... There's honestly too many of them. Why are they... Again? I must do everything myself. Huh. Well, uh, that will be all for this time on Hive Swap Friends Sim. If you like the video, uh, like it, and if you want to see more of my content, subscribe. So yeah, have a good day. Do what you do best.